flying cars, real life video games and talking robots. These are just some of the things coming to life at an artificial intelligence event. Duke Corporate Education is hosting the world's first humanoid citizen robot, Sophia. A live stream conversation between Sophia and the youth will be taking place tomorrow morning. The conversation will enable the younger generation to participate in a dialogue about AI as well as its impact on our future. So joining me now is the partner of the event, Infundi Director William Mbofu. Thanks a lot for joining us this evening. William, I must ask you about uh, questions around, you know, we're talking about how we need to expose young people to artificial intelligence and to 4.0, but how did, exactly are we going to turn that over to active participation in the economy of a 4.0? Okay, yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me. Uh, so, actually, that's a big question that I've asked myself a lot of times. So, when we started working with you, corporate education, uh, we understood that they were bringing Sophia in, you know, and then Sharm Lachetti, the president of Duke, decided, you know what? Why don't we actually take Sophia? Because it's such a big event and it's mostly centered around corporate people only, you know, so the execs are going to the Davos human capital. So why don't we take Sophia and actually just host her for kids, you know? Why don't we allow children, the youth, actually to interact with Sophia? As people may know, it's extremely expensive to even bring Sophia to South Africa, you know, or anywhere, quite frankly. So why don't we take a letter, interact with the youth, you know, just engage those type of conversations so that the youth are at least exposed to who Sophia is and exposed to what she can offer. So, I mean, that was the first plan, which was actually just taking her around 200 kids only, taking her to auditorium, 200 kids hosting them for free, of course. This is kids around the underprivileged background, just so that they could see that, you know what, I can dream big. But we said, why should we just restrict that to only 200 kids, you know? Let's maybe just try to take that to the next level. And which is when uh, Shamla actually came up with the idea and we just kind of implemented it as uh, Imfundi. And that's when we decided, let's host this and actually live stream this to a million kids. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it exposes children to think a different way, you know? So, um, yeah, that's mostly around the fourth IR. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about thinking in a different way. One would say that thinking in a different way requires kids to know that they're able to participate in a different way as well. In other words, being able to see Sophia and the way in which she interacts and the way in which she's uh, growing and developing human-like um, qualities should be able to inspire the very same youth to produce their own versions of Sophia or should we say their own versions of Tabo and Sophie. <laughs> I love that. I love that. No, you're right. The participation, it's, it's so important. It's so important. So that's part of the uh, Million Young Minds is that um, part of the live stream, we want to actually engage the conversation. And so what we've done is uh, we've actually gone to three separate locations, one in Soweto, Eldorado Park, and in Durban. So what we're going to be doing there is actually hosting watch parties, but not just leaving the watch parties so people can live stream and get like a short course on it, but actually trying to take that on a long-term, you know, a long-term look you know yeah. actually stay there for a little bit longer engage some of the conversation and maybe have some classes at a later stage but yeah I mean, it all falls part of how is it that, uh, you know, especially when it comes to young people being able to participate in, a, in this economy that is sometimes seemed over their heads. In other words, looking at, when you're talking about jobs 4.0, look at data analytics, for example, looking at how then do you start going into coding, where coding is becoming a normal way of life instead of reserved for very few privileged people. Mm -hmm. And how do you make, uh, you know, certain jobs that will be seen as redundant in the future um, diversify so that people can become more inclusive in this economy? Mm. So, yeah, you know, that inclusive nature of everything is, uh, is something that we're actually trying to target. Um, you know, people like to talk about what are the jobs of the future, but essentially to even get to that point, you need to ask yourself, what are the skills of the future? You know, what are these things? What are some of these things that are going to be needed? You know, when you talk around coding, I mean, I, I think coding is so important, you know, but there's going to be so many more skills that are going to be needed. And I think in exposing the kids at a very young age, to that type of technology just, just allows them to think differently, actually pursue this, their dreams differently. I mean, if I actually think about it on a personal state, if I wasn't exposed to technology at a young age, which was literally by luck, I mean, raised by the best mother in the world, but by luck, I mean, some people came to my school, did a robotics class, and after that, I immediately started to think to myself, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. You know, they allowed us to, they taught us how to code a robot to do certain things, you know? And I, I just seeing that actually happen already just taught myself that, you know what, I can do more. You know, it's, it's in my hands. You know, the technology is in my hands, the future. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we want to, you know, engage the conversation. It starts there. And are, is everybody able to live stream it? 
Yes, yes, yes. That's the most important thing is the accessibility of it, making it accessible to everybody else. That's actually the reason why we took Sophia out of the auditorium, you know, for the corporates, which is a very important event as well, and decided let's do this for free, you know, just allow everyone to live stream. So to live stream it, you can actually, um, we're doing it on Facebook, Instagram, as well as on Twitter, as well as there's a website. Um, can give you some of those details. Yeah. Yeah. So it's under, is it under the Duke CE website? Yes, okay. yes, yes. So if people just like Google Duke CE, they'll be able to then plug it in and then um, live stream the actual. Yes, thing yeah. I can give you the exact. Uh, for the Facebook, it's Duke Corp Ed. Okay. And that's the same for Instagram, Duke Corp Ed. And then for Twitter, it's Duke CE. So it's going to be as well live interaction while this live stream is happening, you know? So yeah. We're definitely looking forward to it. I know that many young people are looking forward to it as well. William, we're going to leave our conversation there, but thanks a lot for joining us.